Okay, so we are on chapter 14 and it is called The Prospectors. So I will jump start on that. So chapter 14, The Prospectors. When Jack awoke the next morning, he threw off his blanket and rushed outside to see if their burrow was still there. It was tied to a stake outside the tent. Good morning, Stubb, Jack smiled. Stubb was a veteran of the gold diggings. He gave Jack a haughty look. Stubb's a proud animal, the man had said when they brought him when they had bought him. Sometimes he thinks he's a mule. The burrow's head seemed large, almost as large as his hindquarters, and his dark ears stood up like wings of a hawk. Jack liked them. We're going to be friends, he said. Yes, sir. He untied the burrow and threw a leg over his back. Stubb kicked out his hind legs. His tail flew and Jack hit the dirt. The burrow turned his thick neck and peered at Jack with disdain. Jack was so surprised that he just sat there. That wasn't very friendly, said Jack. Pitch Pine Billy, standing in the opening of his dusty tent, roared out laughing. You heard what the man said, Jamoka Jack. He said that Mountain Canary thinks he's a mule. Jack brushed himself off. All I wanted was to ride him. Pitch Pine Billy pulled a red bandana out of his pocket and came over. The mules in these hills is still half wild. He tied the handkerchief across Stubb's eyes. They don't take kindly to being pack animals. You blindfold them first and they'll stand still. Here's the picture of them kicking Jack off. Praiseworthy came out of the tent and stretched and sat on a stump to watch. Daylight was filtering through the trees and the morning had a fresh piney smell. Jack walked through the burrow, sizing him up, around the burrow, sizing him up. Then he spit his hands through a leg over Stubb's back and held on. Ready, said Pitchpine Billy. Ready, said Jack. Pitchpine Billy pulled off the bandana. Jack braced himself. himself. Stubb stood for a minute as if trying to make up his mind whether to act like a mule or a burrow. Good boy, Stubb, Jack said tentatively. The burrow flagged his ears and seemed satisfied that he had been shown the proper respect. He gave a little kick just to get out of his system and behaved himself. Jack walked up and back until breakfast was ready and slipped to the ground. We got ourselves a good burrow, he called to Praiseworthy. Stubb gave a kick as if in protest. Mule, I mean, Jack corrected himself. After breakfast, they struck the tent blindfolded Stubb and cinched the wooden pack saddle to his back. They loaded up their grub and supplies, slipped their pick and shovel through the pack ropes and were ready to leave. Jimmy from town came over with Buffalo John, both still wearing their neckties from the night before. Pitch Pine Billy gazed out over the diggings. Hangtown just won't be the same with a lady in it. Goodbye, gents, Praiseworthy said. I've got a good mind to leave with you, scowled Pitch Pine Billy. Other miners came over and it took five minutes to get their goodbyes in. We'll be looking for you back in the middle of next month, said Buffalo John. You and the Mountain Ox. I'll be here, Praiseworthy said, taking the blindfold off Stubb's face. Let's get going, partner. Praiseworthy picked up their new squirrel gun and Jack took Stubb's rope. The squirrel gun wasn't what Jack had in mind, like a four shooter, but it would do. They'd be able to hunt a little game and he supposed it would stand off an outlaw or two if they, meet, if they met with any. In jack boots and red shirts, they began walking upstream, and soon the farewell shouts of their friends were lost in the trees. It was a fine morning to be going prospecting, but Jack found it hard to walk away from Pitch Pine Billy and Jimmy from town, and even Buffalo John. Still, coming back would be even harder. Maybe the mountain ox isn't as big and terrible as they say he is, Jack murmured. Worse, no doubt, said Praiseworthy. He sounded positively lighthearted. Are you really going to come back and fight him? I gave my word, didn't I? Bare knuckle? Absolutely. Praiseworthy was not pleased that he had won his name and reputation because he had swung on a road agent with a weighted glove. Jack kept a grip on Stubbs' rope and the animal followed with the clanging of drinking cups, coffee pots, gold pans, and empty tin cans. Jack had a sudden vision of his partner lying in the dust of the street, beaten and humiliated. Most of the miners are betting on the mountain ox, he muttered. Praiseworthy scratched through his whiskers. I know that, but I intend to beat him. With reading and writing? Exactly. Praiseworthy pushed the slouch hat back on his head. Miss Arabella once asked me to destroy a book she found in your grandfather's library. If I remember correctly, it was called The Gentleman's Book of Boxing, or The Fine Art of Fiscuffs Explained and Illustrated. She was afraid it might fall in your hands, I suppose. I don't mind telling you that I didn't destroy it. I read it. I devoured it. Fascinating. I believe I could recite whole pages to you. Now it stands to reason that the Mountain Ox has never read a book in his life. He's no doubt a mere brawler. 
Therefore, since I have outread him, I see no reason why I cannot outwit him and outbox him. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm beginning to look forward to it. The two partners exchanged a glance and a smile and continued on their way. Jack put the mountain ox out of his mind. Do you want to carry, do you want to carry our gun? said Praiseworthy. I'd like to carry our gun, said Jack. He took it in the crook of his arm while Praiseworthy led the burrow and kept an eye out for rabbits, squirrels, savages, and outlaws. All they had to do now was find pay dirt. Okay, so that was chapter 14. Um, up next will be at chapter 15.